Do you remember when I asked you for the solutions to say, I think we did the cube roots of unity. Remember the cube roots of unity? And just really quickly, I think from memory we got something like this. Uh, one solution there, um, <coughs> 2 pi on 3, negative 2 pi on 3, like so. Okay. And do you remember we said, oh, that's kind of odd. We noticed that Z1, Z2 and Z3 were conjugates of each other. Do you remember that? Remember to see that? I also gave you another one. I think from memory again was this. Okay, And again, the solutions were all conjugates of each other. They were all paired up. Now when you have a look at these solutions, do I have any conjugates happening? No. Geometrically, no. what do conjugates look like? Conjugates are, look at my green line, it's a reflection across the real axis, right? None of my answers are reflected off the real axis from each other. Right? They are related, like so, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. But they're not conjugates, okay? So my question is, why did I get conjugates here and here, but I didn't get them here? Why, isn't it an odd and even, like, complex function? Well, here, I have odd and even. I have yeah. odd and even. Oh. But you're on the right track. What else is in common between <laughs> these that is not in common with this? Multiple Multiple. And you have a look, and you can see, like, the coefficients of these polynomials, right? This is z cubed oh. minus 1, and then this is z to the 6 plus 64. Do you notice there are only real numbers? There are no eyes. There are no eyes flying around. As soon as you add an i, you get things that are off axis and they don't line up perfectly anymore. Okay? Now, <coughs> I'm starting to get into something that's quite complex. Complex. And um, and honestly is actually really going to be properly dealt with when we do polynomials, okay? But I can still show you enough of it because this is actually a really important point. You should see these and recognize you'll have conjugate solutions, okay? And look at this and say, no, nah, forget it. I'm just gonna have to do every single one. What are we looking at now? I want you to look at the top of the sheet, and there's a, a side of the sheet which has a, um, a title and a side which does not. So be on the side with the title. Okay. Mm -hmm. The title of this is the complex conjugate root theorem. Boy, that's a mouthful. Okay. Now just remember, a theorem just means okay, this is true. We can prove it. Okay. Um, complex roots. Complex roots. We know what those are. And conjugates. Well, we're noticing that you've got conjugate roots sometimes but not conjugate roots other times, okay? Now what I'm gonna do, <coughs> excuse me, is I'm gonna demonstrate, like for the rest of this lesson we're gonna talk a lot about roots of unity, okay? So I'm particularly, if you have a look at this sheet, um, the whole left-hand side, they're all roots of unity. On the right-hand side, they're very close to roots of unity, but not quite, okay? So we're gonna start with very simple cases, and then we're going to notice why the complex conjugate root theorem says, in very, very particular cases, the ones I'm gonna look at here, um, you will always get complex conjugate roots. Okay, so let's begin. Let's think about a nice, simple case. Here is a complex polynomial. Z squared equals 1, or Z squared take away 1 equals 0. Okay, now this is so simple, we can just state the solutions to this, right? What are the square roots, the complex roots, of 1? Um, for everything we're about to do here, I'm actually not interested in what are their actual values, what are their angles. Oh. We can work them out, not difficult, okay? But I'm just interested in, I just want to make a geometric argument. That's all I want to do, okay? So therefore, let's think about this. Um, the actual square roots <laughs> of one are one, there's one of them, okay? Um, these are all unit circles, by the way. And of course, negative one, yes? So both of those are the square roots. So I'm gonna put in the, um, I'm gonna put the modulus in as well, I'm gonna mark that in. So from the origin, there's my solution for Z1, and there's my solution for Z2. There are my two answers, okay? Okay, now, <coughs> while we're thinking about this, right, I want you to think about what's the relationship between z squared equals 1 and z squared equals negative 1. Now, in the real field, right, the field of complex not real numbers, um, this is the solutions, right? But we are not in the field of real numbers, we're in the complex plane, right? So that's why I have all these solutions up here. What are the two solutions for z squared equals negative 1? I I Good, so I've got I up here, like that's the one by definition, I'll call that one Z1. In fact, I'll even say, because it's so easy, I'll identify it as I. I've got one and negative one here. And then what you've got is Z2, which is negative I, and if you square that, the negatives cancel, you just get with I squared, which by definition is negative one. Happy times, okay? Now as we move down, <coughs> what's happening here? 
z cubed. We did this one, and we have our solutions, <coughs> right? Um, the first solution, when k equals 0, is still going to be 1, isn't it? Okay, it's still going to be 1. In fact, spoilers, right? Um, I've got z squared, z cubed, z to the 4, all the way up to z to the 7, right? You're always going to get, on the left-hand column, what is always a solution? Of course it is, right? 1 squared is 1, 1 cubed is 1, 1 is always one of the solutions. Okay? So in fact, I'm going to put a 1. I'm going to put another solution down there because I know I'm going to get there eventually. Okay? Alright, now what are the other two solutions? Remember, they are evenly spaced out on the circumference. Okay? Now the angle at the center is 360 degrees or 2 pi radians. So therefore the angle between each of the three lines, so my three solutions, is 360 divided by 3, or 2 pi divided by 3. Uh, 120 degrees, the reason why I state that is because you can roughly kind of do 120 degrees, right? So 120 degrees from Z1, which is 1, this is going to be where Z2 is. Uh, Z2 is up there. And there's 2 pi on 3. Okay, now, <coughs> here's what I want to point out to you. This is really significant. When we were going through our k equals 0, k equals 1, I always tell you, all right, at a certain point, you stop going forward. Start going forward, it's going to take you out of the principal argument, right? And we start looking at the negatives. Now, being that, 1 is a solution. That's k equals 0. And here is this answer over here where k equals 1. Now, when I do k equals negative 1, right, it's going to take this same gap, 2 pi on 3, but it's going to go, instead of anti-clockwise, it's going to go clockwise. Do you see that? by the same amount this way from the positive real axis. Now that, because the argument is exactly the same as Z2, but negative, right? that gives me a Z3 over here. But because look, I rotated the same amount this way anti-clockwise, and the same amount this way clockwise. So necessarily, these two have to be vertically above or below each other. Does that make sense? Like you're going the same angle this way, same angle that way. So that's what makes these guys conjugates. You see that? Okay, now this is a bit trickier. We didn't do this example, but I wonder if you can work it out with me. Z cubed equals negative one now, okay? Now I'll give you an easy one, right? Again, there's a single real solution, but it's not one, because one cubed is not negative one. What's the real solution? Negative one. Real solution. It's going to be negative one, right? Because negative one times negative one times negative one. Two of the negatives will cancel. That'll leave you with negative one over here. Okay. Isn't it reflective? Yeah, it is. Now we'll get there once we get the answers. Okay. Now here's the interesting thing, right? Z cubed equals negative one. Can we quickly? They're easy numbers. Can we quickly actually work out the solutions to this? Because we know what the solutions are here. Okay. So z cubed equals negative 1. By DeMarva's theorem, I can state that r cubed cos 3 theta plus i sine d theta, right? What's it equal to? What is negative 1 in mod arc form? It has a modulus of 1, because that's its distance from the origin, right? And what is the argument that takes me from the positive real axis all the way around to negative 1? Pi. pi, very good. So I've got cos pi plus i sine pi. Now from this, I mean, okay, the modulus is fine. I mean, we're on the unit circle, so no big deal. But when I look at the angle, right, 3 theta equals oh. pi <coughs> plus 2k two k k pi. Two k pi on 3. Yes? Uh, Wait, so... No. You Sorry, I've already divided by... I've already done, I've done the next <laughs> step already, okay? 2k pi for integer values of k. And now I'll divide by 3, which gives me... 2k... Pi on 3 yeah. plus 2k, 2K, pi, 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 on 2K pi on 3. Okay, now hold on a second. Here's the first solution that I know about. I'm not going to call it z1 because what's the k value that will get me to this solution? This is pi, right? So pi on 3 plus 2 times 1 pi on 3. That's pi on 3 plus 2 pi on 3. That's pi. So this is actually k equals 1. That's actually the second solution I'm going to get. Right? What's the first solution? It's pi on three, three. Right? Which is somewhere about yeah. This Does is the order matter? Say it again. Does the order matter? Um 
not so much in a way, like they're all, they're all roots, doesn't matter that all that much. But I do want to, like I'm trying to make an argument that actually does depend on the order that we get to the solutions in, okay? okay? So specifically, I went up here, pi on three, yep. right, you see with that? And then I went another two pi on three to get all the way to pi, mm. does that make sense? So there's my z1, sorry, and there's my z2. Okay, now obviously I'm at the principal argument already. So how do I get the next, the last solution? Minus. You do negative one, right? Now negative one is going to be negative two pi on three from z1, right? So it's going to be down here. See that? I've got negative two pi on three. Mm -hmm. So therefore, what's the actual argument of this z3? Minus. It's minus. pi on three minus two pi on three, which is minus negative one. pi on three. That's this argument here. Again, just like I had in z cubed equals positive one, I've got two pi on three anti-clockwise, and then I've got minus two pi on three, which is clockwise. And I've got the same scenario here, it's just a different size angle. So again, I have these complex conjugates, you see? And uh, negative one is its own conjugate, because negative one plus or minus zero i, like it's plus zero i is the same as minus zero i, right? Okay, now, what patterns are starting to emerge? Keep thinking. It's still a bit early, so you might not get it yet. Okay, z to the 4 equals 1. We already know what the first solution is. z1 is going to be 1. These are evenly spaced. How many are there? 4. Just like here, right? Just like here. But the difference is, right, instead of starting at pi on 12 and then going around, right angle, right angle, right angle, I'm starting at 1 or an argument of zero, right? Zero is a better way to say it because I was talking about angles here, right? So therefore, I go around pi on two, which heads me here, which of course is z2 equals to i, because of course it is, because i to the power of four is negative one to the power of two, which is one. And then you've got your other solutions all spaced out evenly around the circumference. And then I would take a k equals negative one to get to this one. Yeah, so there's z4 equals minus i. I will leave it to you to try and work out why I have left this space over here blank, and we're going to turn over the page. <laughs>